All right, going for another gang of the black pieces again. We're going for this against e4 and against d4. Should be able to get our uh, our stone wall set up here. Gonna stop this. Remember, we don't really want to take that. It's one thing we're actively trying to avoid. Okay, again, I don't think that does very much for white. I'm never really sold on this queen b3 move or queen b6 if colors are reversed. I don't know, it just doesn't seem to do that much. You hate the stone wall, how do you punish it? Sorry, this is not that class. You're uh, looking for the class down the hall. This is the class on how to win with the stone wall. In 10 moves. John Conway. Thanks for the resub. A two year anniversary celebration, John Conway. Thanks for the tier three resub. I mean, I don't know what to say. He's just tossing pieces at me. Yeah, I I'm just not impressed with queen b3 or queen b6. I feel like it's such a silly move. Seems like a waste. Pawn's already defended. Yep, pretty good start uh, here to the session. Now we get the white pieces. Uh-oh. Let's see what setup we go for this time. Ooh, e6. Potentially bad sign for him already. Let's stop him going to e4. Let's play f4. C4. Remember, that move is pretty much bad. <laughs> Definitely not a dangerous move. Get our knight into e5. Queen up to f3. And knight d7, which is probably bishop h7 as usual. e4 is a tremendously strong move. b5 isn't possible. g4, g5, queen h3. That's what I'm eyeballing. Queen here, he's probably gonna go for something like g6. The thing is, uh, this bishop's not going to b7, so I'm actually not too worried about the knight getting in there, so I think I have time to play this. Because that's just not possible. If his bishop was here, I might be a little more concerned about giving up control of the e4 square, but, and then I would play g4, g5 right away, but here, I think I can go right away with queen h3. h6, ooh. Well now g4 is uh, definitely tempting. Knight h7. Takes or takes on f7 both look like they work. If not g5. Again, it's just like he can't take on e5. It's always super good. And he can't bring his knight to e4. So I find the position kind of annoying. Well, g5 is what I'm looking at, right? No other move to be considered.
We have pressure on H7. Pressure on F7 as well. Knight here. Knight takes, threatens, knight f6, and mate. Um, he's threatening maybe something like this. Knight f7 looks like it wins. The question is, do we want to throw this in before we take on f7? And I would say probably yes. So let's take. Also guards this. If he takes here, then we throw in knight f6. And now we take here. We're threatening mate and we're also guarding g5. And that'll be it. Again, completely dead after what? 10, 15 moves, not even. GG. I just, I find these positions when black plays e6 insurmountable for black. Like, just you can't overcome as soon as you play e6 you have to be very alert playing with the black pieces we did a, a viewer tournament where i forced black to play with the pawn on e6 it's not comfortable you definitely want the bishop out somewhere because this is just very unpleasant like having the knight get in there and, and playing c4 makes it even worse like this bishop is just garbage Knight sits there, he can't play knight e4. Highly uncomfortable. The annoying thing is black wants to control e5, but of course the knight's sitting on that square, so we've sort of laid claim to e5 and laid claim to e4 with our pieces. And it's not very clear how he can do anything about that with his bishop there, which is why it makes a big difference if that bishop is just sitting on f5. Yeah, the bishop sits on c1 often the entire game <laughs> most of my wins my like under 20 move wins i don't even touch the bishop i don't even think about moving it okay knight here is an interesting first move i'll start with this he could still play that he goes d4 so take the opportunity to play f5 e6, c6. I like to go c6 first here because knight b5 is sometimes a threat, so let's just do away with that. Solidify things here. I'll play knight d7 to prevent knight e5. We'll go knight f6, castle, and knight e4. And again, I have the e4 square. He doesn't quite have the e5 square for himself. Just a very frustrating concept. Am I not weak on the dark squares now? Yeah, I mean, it's my good bishop. I don't love to trade it. Like, don't be fooled that your opponent's dark square bishop is not good. When it's on f4, it's a good bishop. It's outside the pawns. It's on this diagonal. Worse would be playing bishop e7 and like, what the hell am I doing here? I'd rather get rid of his strong bishop for mine rather than let it be there. Okay, knight e4. Of course, we would take this way. So this is one of the like truly one of the first times we've seen knight e2 be played. It's a very natural kind of move. Because you don't want to take, but you also know that maybe I'm going to take on c3, so knight e2 kind of uh, does away with that. If knight f4, we could go g5, I suppose. Question is, do we want to go e5, which is often a very good move, or maybe more like this? 
I'm gonna go rook f6. See what happens. I don't like playing knight f6. This is like a again really typical bad move in the in the stone wall. White plays knight e5 immediately and then plays f3. You lose your e5 square and you lose your e4 square with a single move. So really not a fan of this. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I want to leave this knight here to cover e5. And I know it blocks the bishop, but it's worth preventing him from playing knight e5 as much as I can, within reason. We have a G pawn advance we can still try. Of course, if he takes, we're always taking with the F pawn. And you can just feel the gears turning in his head. Like, no one really likes playing against the stone wall. It's just not fun. This is a big thing here. All because of rook f6. Damn. Did he disconnect? Is he here? Usually it's right around this moment where I start to also ask, did I disconnect? Am I here? Because you never know. What's going on here? <laughs> He's in the tank, Rook F6, just a, a bombshell of a move. Are you here? That's a good question. Are you guys real in the chat? Is this real life? I'm gonna refresh. Not that game. Not that game. Not that game. This game. He's still thinking. He's still thinking. Thinking. Like, he's got four bars there. Very low lag. <laughs> What's going on? This is an 11-move win. Look, if you guys can't access E5, and you got a knight staring you in the face on E4, I understand it as well. I get it, man. I wouldn't want to play that position either. And we didn't win by abandonment. We actually won on time. So he's just at his computer, hand on the mouse, just staring at the screen. <laughs> okay. That's a win, big KO. All right. D4. C5 is almost always after black plays that, I play C3. Just the way she goes. When the bishop goes there, 
might be intending that. So I'll definitely be playing this move, I think. Trying to take control of that. All right, time to chuck the Jeep on up the board. See what happens. Here, you might be throwing the knight back to e8. Wouldn't be crazy for me to then play h4, though. Might not be crazy for me to play it now. I'm not the man you want. You've made a mistake. I'm in touch with technological advances, but well everywhere. But I can tell you that We're sending it. This is a big move by him. If we play h6, he has to go back. But I'm not sure that's uh, much of an achievement. Well, let's take. If knight here, then I think queen g4. I mean, I'm very close to being able to sack on g6. It's very close to winning, but uh, he can take my f4 pawn. So let's get out of this pin. Let's threaten a move like queen e6 check. And of course, prepare to bring our knight here. Now that no knight can appear on e4, I'm free to play moves like knight f3. And here, if I'm not going crazy, queen e6 should be not knight f7 because, okay, he can take and there's still a lot of game to play there. Rook f8, I mean, this pawn is loose. Um, but knight takes on g6 and queen takes. Seems to lead to um, made on h7, or at least uh, a lot of pieces being won. He has to take it. So only move king here. Queen check, king there. We actually don't have a mate on the spot. As far as I can see, bishop g6, king e6, for example. Queen takes knight check, king e6. It's like very good, of course, but I don't see it being immediately mating. So after king g8, I'm definitely considering queen takes h5 first, which might potentially, could potentially be more lethal. I'm trying to figure that out right now. Because of course, queen h7, queen h5, king e6, queen g6 just does win the bishop. And that really should be sufficient. King here, queen takes. I mean, there's moves like rook f7. It's just not, not quite mate, that's all.
I think I think this guy really is thinking. It's, it's not the most simple position. So you found the best move, I think. And I'm still torn. I think Queen H7 and chasing the king is definitely like, it's definitely correct. No doubt about it. There's something attractive about this. Probably the only attractive thing about this is that he could blunder. So let's give him enough credit. He won't blunder. I'll play this. Here, here is still slightly unclear. Let's do this. I mean, that looks like a nice check. Uh, it also allows for f5 and bishop f4. Here, there was rook g8. I wasn't sure. Wasn't sure what was going on there. I think we just play normally here. I mean, materials even, I might win a bishop, but it's kind of uh, good either way. Check. And I'm definitely looking at this. Trying to use all the pieces. I think this should get the job done can simplify our life by just kind of taking everything in sight and I'm actually going to take the time to prevent him from doing that. I think it's worth it. King F3, powerful. GG. He had some good fight there, running away, but he was dead lost for a while. I yeah, just kind of assaulted the king side here, like G4, H4, like. This is just scary to deal with. It might not be better for white. Maybe it's around equal, but this is just frightening. I'd rather play white every time. You know, it's not overcomplicated. Just throw the pawns off the board. Specifically, I was being careful in some cases, to maybe try to avoid g5, 
with knight h5 because then sometimes like you don't have another way to break through. So I want to play h5 first and only then g5. So we first create weakness and then we can try to exploit it. Something like that. So our rating is 1738. All right, let's go white pieces again. Let's go here. Of course, we're going to, I think, be seeing this more and more. Seven. Well, remember, if we can't go here, then the plan is probably to uh, to go for an eventual e4. I'm interested in maybe trying f5 as well. It was e5 anyway. Take low eddy. This move is actually quite weakening on the uh, king side here. Opening this diagonal is always risky. Now we have knight e6, we have knight c5. Some tempting options here. Here, I think queen here, knight f7 is working. Barely. Otherwise, knight e6 is a threat. Yeah, the the stone wall where you face d6, you know, almost always involves either playing e4 yourself or simply adjusting because your normal idea of putting an knight on e5 is obviously not happening with a pawn on d6. 
That's what I was thinking, Gory, exactly. Rook takes knight at the end, so. Well, we could be wrong here, but. Because we also have to be careful of moves like this. Well, that bishop moves anywhere is kind of relevant. I don't think the calculation is simple. Twenty-five. Hit the queen. We can take. We can also take. It all looks good. here I think up a rook Rookie one forces a rook trade, but I thought uh, maybe I would get optimistic. Can do can do things with the rooks on the board, I think. That's not the one I expected. Should be able to put them in a check meeting box there. These are all covered by my pieces. And so the only moves that are needed are these ones. GG. 1747, close to 1750, but not quite there. Another game needed. As you can see from you know all the setups that people play against the stone wall, but this is the one where all the orthodox stuff, you know, 95, it just doesn't work because there's a pawn on d6. So you do have to adjust big time when it comes to this setup. Okay, we got the black pieces again. Going for the French exchange. But our opponent has finally, this is the first one in the entire thing that has gone C4. Truly the first one, right? Because again, C4, it's like, best I can do is C6, right? But this is like, finally someone who's not leaving their pawn there and playing Knight C3. They're actually playing C4. Played against someone like this before.
Okay, we have our strong knight. Achieved. All right, I'm gonna pretend my king on f6 is a queen. Maybe knight b3. That's not really what he wants to do here. Takes, knight takes. Um, we do have the option to go knight takes. Takes here. And then takes back which I'm fairly attracted to, and I think, <laughs> I think I may do. Um, but yeah, taking on D2 and taking on F3 and taking on D4 is kind of the, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, this is, this is what good chess is all about. Takes, Takes. Oh. Rook F1. Sorry, brah. Didn't realize we were trying that hard. Didn't realize it was like that. I'll go here. I know this bishop can move, but I don't feel compelled to deal with it just yet. I'll take. H5 also looks like a decent move. I'm trying to start getting my pawns on dark squares, like F4 I want to do. Okay, he does F4, but this also gives me something to, something to play for. I think this just makes my 
life easier. Pawns are saying hi. Of course, each two was probably a maybe a more concise victory there, but couldn't resist Bishop D3. 1769. Nice. Tommy, it's always a win for the Stonewall, buddy. These all go into the column of Stonewall Ws. Control that square. Bishop g4, I kind of anticipate. e6, knight f3. Okay, good move. Bishop g4. In my opinion, you want to get that bishop out. I think that's very relevant. Okay, so. We want to go knight e5. Can't quite do it. Bishop d6, probably the next move. Let's go here. Bishop d6, h3, takes, takes, guards my pawn. And here, I think he's getting his bishop trap. Bishop f5 is not an option. And e4 once again is defended, this time a little bit different. This doesn't look that intimidating. Pieces are out, can't complain. Queen h5 looks pretty good. Ooh, I'm getting real tempted with some stuff there. F5 is not quite an option because of the e5 knight. Let's go here and see what he's gonna do. This move's not possible. He may put his knight back on f6. He may do this, which I'm extremely happy about. <laughs> very, very, very surprised by that move. Okay, well, rook takes f7 and queen takes h7 looks... I mean, it's just in the spirit. It's something that you can't calculate too much or you might convince yourself not to do it, you know? So you have to have to go for it. Queen h4 loses on the spot. Um, King e7 loses on the spot. This is hanging with check and rook f1 is coming. Even though this is just a free piece, um, I think rook check is the most direct win because it actually wins the queen.
But question is, after Rook takes here, what's his next move? Because I'm still threatening all the same things. Rook takes, let's say he moves the queen. Then maybe bishop g5, stop the king from running. Like, I definitely get the feeling that after rook takes, he may be in just as much trouble. Queen f6, we have bishop g5. So, rook f1 was absolutely winning the queen in the game, but yeah, I had a feeling that this would be just as devastating. How are we going to say no to a beautiful checkmate like that? That's a pretty one. All right, we got the white pieces. Getting ahead of that bishop. Ooh, okay. Let's block the bishop. Don't want to deal with knight b4. This knight is so bad against the stone wall. I'm uh, a little concerned for his next couple moves. Knight H6. We're gonna play knight e5, but we can also play e4 here. Still the exact same ideas. Well, taking looks like a very, very, very good move. Play it nice and chill though. Bring the other rook over. Maybe go for g4. Okay. What's happening here? You gotta be careful, you don't. Uh, I don't think that move works. Don't think that move works. He might lose his queen. He's definitely gonna lose a piece here. G4 and F5. Guess we're not quite winning the queen. <laughs> he does have G5.
<laughs> well, this is quite something. Let's go here. Knight here, queen g6. It's like, <laughs> should be 10 wins here. Queen g4, f6. There's, I mean, I can win pawns here and there. I'm trying to win more than that, but I'm not sure it's possible. <laughs> it's like incredibly winning. H4 or knight h3 both seem to accomplish the same thing. Funny-looking move. I'll take... I suppose keep pieces on the board. Although, bishop takes f5 was... A little bit tempting. Just nothing wrong with our position. Everybody's working. King h1, of course, is necessary before this becomes a threat. But the nasty thing was he couldn't really get out of the pin without spending two moves. So I am actually going to have time for King h1 no matter what. King d6, unfortunately, loses everything. Here, double rooks. Rook F7 will be very good. E5, I think D5, so he doesn't have a square to run to. It's the most, most infuriating uh, move to face, I think.
that. That one's not gonna work. Go for uh, some kind of checkmate here. You just have to re. Uh, he's got too many pawn moves, unfortunately for him. And of course. Let's go with the night mate. All right. Let's go e3. Seems to be materializing for a similar kind of opening position. C4, never a good move. I mean, we're at 1800. People are still playing moves like C4. I do not, do not think that uh, moves like C4 are good at all. Okay, let's castle. E4 definitely stands out here as a move. Let's go for E4. Yeah, I was about to say, it doesn't really look like you're losing a piece here, but because I have my knight on e5, there's no like immediate, oh, I'm gonna do something like that, but it actually is just lost. So I play e5 next. Um. I think here, takes, takes, bishop b7 is kind of concerning. I'll just go back. I was looking at here, if he took the knight, queen c6, I think there was knight, takes, queen g4, queen h4, threatening mate, f5, queen f6, rook f3, and mate. Mate ideas, but... Um, much simpler is to just retreat the knight and go take the pawn on e4. I mean, this is over. I'm up a full piece. I mean, this is an 1800 here. This is an 1800 here. That's a little odd. These bishops cover everything. I'm even attacking his bishop here. Again, he's not really threatening anything, so. Bishop h7 is actually a threat here. There is a mating pattern here. Bishop h7, queen h5, rook, H, uh, rook f8, and queen f7. GG. Again, I mean, this game was over in 10 moves. After e4, 
White's position looks tremendous. Castling is a huge blunder. And the clearance tactic. Clearing the way for e5 to happen. Very nice. Very nice. Play a better opening. There are other openings you could say are objectively better than the stone wall, but we've made it to 1800 pretty smoothly with this opening. I'd say it's pretty good. And we're going to get the white pieces. Let's see if we can... Get another uh, stone wall set up here. Okay. Sometimes I like to wait and like not play. Like once you play f4, people know what you're up to. And then maybe they play d6. Sometimes I like to wait because they play d5 and then it's not as clear. Then you hit them with f4 and... That can work out well. Ooh, bishop g4. Okay. Bishop or knight? Well, I'm probably, or sorry, a queen or knight. I'm probably going to go queen because, again, the knight doesn't really do much from f3. I don't mind an open, uh, don't mind an open file. Not exactly going to say no. I want him to take. I'm having a tough time forcing him to take, though. I'll threaten to threaten. Ooh, that looks like a high energy move. A5. He can't do anything because I take the knight and it threatens the queen. Here, I thought he couldn't do because of this. It's a good reaction. It is going to save him a piece, but it's not going to save the position. Queen g3, we have uh, queen g2. Kind of guards everything. He doesn't have time to take this. These are now protected. Well, e4 comes to mind here. One thing about e4, though, is after the knight moves, d4 becomes really weak. And I'm not so sure about that. Push the pawn twice. I think the that guy was still hanging. The 
pawn on d4. That's why I didn't do that. a strange looking position. We have two extra pawns. And that should be enough here. And we know we can trade here because if um, he takes, then I have clear two extra pawns. Obviously, king and pawn endgame. Up material like that is going to be winning. Stop all the invasion squares. All we want is a rook behind a pawn. Then we know we're good. Because I can lose this pawn and it's still fine. You can't take that. You know you can't take that. Yeah, we were literally about to Pac Man all his pawns. Eighteen oh one. Nice. Oh, hit 1800 there. I mean, it's relatively painless. I'll tell you the toughest on chess.com is 1300s. I say it every time, it's the truth. These games do not feel as tough as the 1300s. Because even at 17, 1800 here, a lot of these games are dead lost in 15 moves. Like, there's no opening that will really do that consistently at every rating level. Ever since 400, yeah, some games might go the distance, like this game, got to an end game. But to still get wins sprinkled in that happen in like 10, 15 moves and with like brilliancies and just attacking the king or blundering pieces in the opening, the stone wall seems to provide that the most. Wow, look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another stone wall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also, click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.